Israel and Palestine, the Israel-Hamas war has now entered its fifth day today and the Israel has gone on a full counter-offensive against Hamas. Israel bombarded Gaza with airstrikes and reduced the buildings to rubbles, leaving no space for anyone at all. Now, Israel has stopped all access to food, fuel and uh, medicines into Gaza. And the corridor access from Egypt has also been shut down after a given warning to the residents of Ashkelon city, Hamas fired several rockets into the city post 5 p.m. The death toll by Hamas's surprise attack against Israel has now climbed to 1,000. Meanwhile, the UN has said that there is a clear evidence that war crimes have been committed on both the sides, including targeting civilians. Now, News 18's Neeraj Kumar, while reporting from Ashkelon, got stuck due to missiles and explosion. Take a look at that report. सायरन की आवाजें आप सुन सकते हैं ये सायरन की आवाजें जब सायरन की आवाजें होती हैं तो तमाम गाड़ियां हम लोग भी रुक गए आप देख सकते हैं हमारे कैमरा पर्सन करम पाजी हम लोग भी उतर रहे हैं गाड़ी से हम लोग उतरेंगे क्योंकि जैसे ही सायरन की आवाज आती है ये आप देख सकते हैं बाबा जी का रॉकेट आप देख सकते हैं करम रॉकेट यहाँ धुआं आप देख सकते हैं किस तरह से वॉर एरिया में न्यूज एटीन इंडिया के टीम वॉर एरिया में है और किस तरह का माहौल है वो आप देख सकते हैं यह बिल्कुल वॉर जोन है लगातार मिसाइल से हमला किया जा रहा है इसराइल और हमास के बीच में जो स्थिति है न्यूज एटीन इंडिया की टीम न्यूज एटीन इंडिया की टीम आपको लगातार किस तरह का माहौल है वो यहाँ आपको देखने को मिल रहा है देख सकते हैं इधर यहीं से धमाका हुआ हम लोग ये शीशे टूटे अभी मिसाइल से हमला हुआ है ये लगातार सड़कों पे इस तरह के माहौल करम आप उधर की तस्वीरें दिखाई ये देख सकते हैं पूरा का पूरा धुआं है बीच बीच में सैकड़ों की संख्या में रॉकेट छोड़े जाते इधर की तस्वीरें दिखाई है This is the shopping center of Sherrod, uh, uh, one of the border towns that came under attack uh, and uh, you can hear military helicopters buzzing overhead. Uh, there's uh, intermittent sound of uh, rocket firing and bombs going off in the distance. So this place remains very tense and this is the, the site of one of the rocket attacks. Uh, one of the Hamas rockets fell on this car and this is what remains of it. Uh, uh, metal and glass splintered everywhere. Uh, it has been uh, completely gutted, this vehicle. The situation remains very tense still in this town. Uh, people are stocking up on supplies uh, and this is a town of some 30,000 people. In the last few days, it has seen more than 100 rockets being fired uh, from Gaza. Tamam log sadak pe dekh rahe hain. Waha ab dekh sakte hain Ashkelon mein. Apni gaadiyon ko rok ke log utar gaye the aur wo shelter le liye the. Ham bhi yaha baith gaye the, so gaye the. और शेल्टर ले लिए थे और इस तरह से गाड़ियां रुकी और फिर अपनी गाड़ियों में बैठ के लोग निकल गए हमारे साथ जो पायलट थी वो भी गाड़ी से निकली और यहां आपको ऐसे लोगों के साथ में होना है जो आपको बता सके कि आपकी जान या आपका शरीर कैसे सुरक्षित रहेगा तो इस तरह की स्थिति लगातार यहां वॉर जोन में आपको देखने को मिलेगा न्यूज एटीन इंडिया की टीम आपको एच से हर एक रिपोर्ट दे रही है एस्केलॉन में लगातार मिसाइल से हमला किया जा रहा है हमास की तरफ से और ये कल हमले की तस्वीरें ये देख सकते हैं किस तरह से यहाँ गिरा था वो मिसाइल और उसके बाद जो उसका असर होता है स्प्लिंटर्स होते उससे जो कण निकलते हैं उससे जो प्रभाव होता है मिसाइल गिरने के बाद and never seen seen anything like this but is all places for the slaughter the slaughter is there they didn't care if you are a man or a woman you are young or old man they are killers they are murderers very hard to put it in words there are a lot of emotions uh, a lot of anger uh, a lot of shock a lot of mourning horrible what's happening to our 
beautiful little country. We don't tell them to come to do that. There's animals, it's not the uh, Arab. And the Quran, they said they don't need to kill. No kids, no ladies, and they kill kids and ladies. The thing I want the most is to wake up from this nightmare, to forget it had all happened. Everything was so amazing. The best party I've been to in my life, until it went from paradise to hell in one second. As the situation continues to remain tense there in Israel, CNN News 18's managing editor Zaka Jacob spoke to Israeli ambassador to India, Nar Gillen, on the Israel-Hamas war. Listen in to that conversation. Can you first tell us what is the situation on the ground as it exists today? Are all Israeli citizens safe? Are they all accounted for? Are there still hostages? If so, how many? What is your best understanding of what is the ground situation right now? If I can go a little bit uh, to Saturday morning, uh, one of the most holiest uh, Jewish holidays, very early in the morning where people are, Saturday also, people are sleeping in their beds. There was a dual attack perpetrated by the terror organization Hamas from Gaza. They uh, started bombarding with uh, rockets and missiles all along uh, uh, the uh, communities, Jewish communities around the uh, Gaza Strip. And uh, in parallel, uh, close to 1,000 terrorists from Gaza infiltrated more than 30 uh, Jewish communities. And uh, unfortunately, the number of the horror there is incredible, the atrocities, uh, ISIS type of behavior. They killed women, children, elderly, uh, almost 1,000 people, they kidnapped another close to 150, close to 3,000 wounded. Uh, among the dead, uh, more than 250 youngsters who were in an open party music festival carnival uh, not far from Gaza. Uh, they just butchered them and shot them. Uh, and that's it, more or less, uh, the situation. It took us uh, close to 24 hours to regain control of everything, to go from house to house, to look for the hunt the terrorists, save some of the hostages that were still there. Now, Zaka Jacob also spoke to ex-NSA John Bolton on the situation in Israel and the implication of the war, listening to that conversation as well. We've all seen the dastardly terror attacks that happened in Israel on Saturday, carried out by Hamas operatives. But now Israel is launching a major counteroffensive by way of air and also major mobilization on ground. Uh, what would you say to those people who say that Israel runs the risk of its counteroffensive, of its response being disproportionate? I think any state, any people have a right to live in peace and security. They have a right to be free from aggression and free from terrorism. And when they are threatened, they are entitled to take steps in self-defense. They are not required. They are not required to respond only proportionately. They are allowed to eliminate the threat. Uh, and if that's what Israel is going to do, I think that's entirely permissible. How do you then distinguish between who are the Hamas operatives and the Hamas leadership uh, who need to be eliminated? Uh, surely Israel is justified in that after what we saw on Saturday. But how do you distinguish them from who the civilians in Gaza are? Well, the Israelis were clearly the victims of a terrorist attack, uh, and they are now going to retaliate. The fact that the uh, Hamas uh, terrorists cut off the heads of babies as part of their terror operation shows just how barbaric they are. But you know what else shows barbarism? To use your own women and children and hostages as human shields. So what, what Hamas is doing in trying to protect itself in the Gaza Strip is simply a different form of barbarism. You cannot equate the victims of terrorism with the terrorists themselves.
Now in an exclusive interview to CNN News 18, former Israel ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Michael Oren sheds light on the current situation in Israel, the growth of terrorist group Hamas and why US military aid to Israel seems difficult amid the war in Ukraine. Ambassador Oren has also thanked Indian Prime Minister Modi for his unwavering support to Israel. Listen into that conversation as well. Ambassador Michael Oren has shed light on the current situation in Israel, the growth of terrorist group Hamas and why U.S. military aid to Israel seems difficult amid the war in Ukraine. Ambassador Oren has also thanked Indian Prime Minister Modi for his unwavering support to Israel. Listen in. This is deeply, profoundly traumatic um, for our people. Um, my daughter, who's in the next room, just showed me a picture of a, a young woman she grew up with, a beautiful young woman with you know, ha three gorgeous kids. Uh, the terrorists came into their house and killed all of them, killed all of them, killed these three beautiful children, um, killed 260 young people attending a rave concert uh, in the desert, uh, threw people out of their vans and shot them on the street. And then the horrors just begin because the people who were captured um, women were stripped, we think probably sexually abused, uh, spat upon, beaten publicly, children put into cages. Um, and you know, there's, there's, much of the media wants to refer to the Hamas terrorists as militants. Militants don't do something like this. These are, are barbarians. They're barbarians. They are terrorists. The full definition of the word terrorist. If these aren't terrorists, what are terrorists? Well, there's two factors here. One is our failure. And we have to admit that there has been a, a very significant failure here, an intelligence failure, uh, a failure of tactics. Um, I think, and I want to be very frank with you, when I was in government and I was dealing with the Gaza issue at the highest level, um, there was a general feeling among Israeli policymakers, general, and, and from different parties, there was no really disagreement about this feeling that uh, that Hamas you know, wears two hats. One hat is a, is a terrorist hat. The other hat is a sovereign hat. They, they were the government... Well, this is Israel's essentially worst nightmare. When my conversations with Israeli security officials over uh, my past three years here or so, the concern was always about the North and what would happen if the North got involved, if Hezbollah got involved. I don't think anyone ever imagined what is happening right now over the last two days or so. Earlier today, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv were once again targeted by a barrage of rockets. I was in my apartment when this happened, and as soon as it was over, I came out on my balcony and I could see a plume of black smoke coming in the area of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Jerusalem in these conflicts in the past tends to be kind of taken out of the equation. It might get one round of, of rockets and that's about it. It's different this time and it feels different across this region. This feels completely different. That's what you're hearing from the Israeli military as well. They're saying this isn't an operation. This isn't a tit for tat. This is a full out. This is a full out war. Israel has not properly declared war guys since the 1973 Yom Kippur War 50 years ago. And that's what's so stunning about all of this. Now let's come back home. The war between Israel and the Hamas in which over 1,000 peoples have lost their lives has now sparked a political row here in India. This happened after the Congress Working Committee, the party's highest decision-making body, underlined its support for the Palestinian people's right to have a land for themselves, a, a self-run government and to live with dignity and respect. The BJP has hit out at the Congress party and accused the opposition party of supporting terrorism and being a hostage to minority vote bank politics. Now, managing editor Zaka Jacobs spoke to Congress MP Shashi Tharoor over the Congress's resolution supporting Palestine. Listen into that conversation. Yesterday, the CWC, the Congress Working Committee, uh, put out a statement which I, I just quoted excerpts of it saying that it recognizes the importance of the right to self-determination of the Palestinian people. Uh, it did not make any reference to Hamas directly or use the word terror in reference to the attacks that happened on Saturday. Can you articulate for our viewers why the need for the CWC to put out that statement, especially when the Congress Party had put out an official statement the day before? Yeah, in fact, I think the official statement the day before uh, speaks more uh, comprehensively to the Congress stand. And I think there will be more statements to come. You should see the CWC resolution as being principally about domestic matters. As you know, Rahul Gandhi's press conference was focused entirely 
uh, on the question of the caste census and the socioeconomic conditions of backwardness in our country. Um, this was almost an incidental uh, uh, element. And I think that if you were to look at the evolving situation uh, in the region, you're going to find the Congress also will be coming up with more statements. I expect another one soon, which does give you the condemnation of terror that many of us have individually expressed and that the party certainly shares. Um, no one is in favor of terrorism. I mean, we as a country have been victims of terrorism. We will never condone it. We just felt that the prime minister's statement, while in that respect entirely acceptable, did not go far enough to accommodate the larger picture. And the larger picture is one of India's consistent support for the rights of both Palestinians and Israelis to live secure and decent lives in dignity on their own lands and behind safe borders. Right now, we have a situation where Israel has enjoyed that for much of the last 75 years, and the Palestinian people haven't. They've been subjected to a fairly dehumanizing occupation. And that's why the feeling was that we have to acknowledge the fact that we are committed to ensuring the Palestinians also have rights. And that was completely missing from the Prime Minister's statement. Now, I, I fully share the Prime Minister's condemnation of, of, of Hamas terrorism. And on that, I don't really think there's any dissent. Shifting focus to another pressing matter here from the National Territory amidst the Kaveri water dispute between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. The Kaveri Water Regulation Committee is scheduled to meet in Delhi today. In Tamil Nadu, the Kaveri Delta Pro uh, Protection Movement has called for a bond in the Delta districts and four neighbouring districts to protest against the Karnataka government's alleged failure to release adequate water for irrigation in the river Kaveri. Now, meanwhile, in Karnataka, a pro Kannada outfit will get out the Raj Bhavan in Bengaluru to protest against the state government for releasing water to Tamil Nadu. Time to slip into a very short commercial break, but stay with CNN News 18 for more such stories and developments right on the other side. Hostage taking. Fighters abducted partygoers fleeing a rave near the kibbutz of Raim near Gaza. One analyst told Reuters that Hamas probably succeeded beyond their expectation, but now they'll have to, quote, deal with an Israel determined to decimate them. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah.
الحين باتجاه قطاع غزة ها هم جنودنا الذين أثخنوا في عدونا Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. We have a big breaking news coming in and this is CNN News 18's mega exclusive. We have received a word coming in from the top Taliban sources. They have told to CNN News 18 that Kabul will not send any Taliban fighters to Gaza. All media reports are wrong and baseless. We stand by our old statement that our soil will not be used for any kind of terror activity or we will participate in any such activity. We definitely want both of them to sit together and talk. Taliban sources have also told CNN News 18 that we are in the process of building Afghanistan and we cannot afford to go wrong in that case. Few days back, a media report came that Taliban will send fighters to Gaza to fight against Israel. But now, these charges and allegations have been refuted clearly by the Kabul that they are not going to send any of their fighters to Gaza to fight against Israel. Top sources have confirmed to CNN News 18 that Kabul is not going to send any Taliban fighters to Gaza. All the media reports are wrong and baseless. We stand by our old statement that our soil will not be used for any such terror activity or we will not participate in any sort of activity. We definitely want both the sides, which is Gaza's Hamas side, also Israel to sit together and talk over this particular issue that is currently escalating between both the nations. Now, Taliban sources have clearly told CNN News 18 that we are in process of building Afghanistan and we cannot afford to go wrong in any such case. A few days back, media reports came that Taliban will send fighters to Gaza to fight against Israel. Host India will lock horns against Afghanistan in their second match of the ODI World Cup 2023 at Arun Jaitley Stadium in Delhi today. Rohit Sharma led India will be without Shubman Gill for the second consecutive match as the opener is still recovering from the dengue and did not travel with the team to Delhi as well. While KL Rahul and Virat's Heroics in the first match took India to the victory. On the other hand, Afghanistan lost to Bangladesh in their first match by six wickets and with 92 balls remaining. Afghanistan will be hoping to bounce back against the dominant Indian side today in the Arun Jaitley Stadium. The Indian team will be hoping to win their second match on the trot and increase their uh, net run rate as well. India is all set to take on Afghanistan tomorrow and this is going to be a very very crucial encounter between the Indian team and the Afghanistan team who have already done their practice. Currently at the uh, Arun Jaitley Stadium, I'll just try and show you in the visuals over here, the Indian team is making sure that they leave no stone unturned this time around to make sure that whenever tomorrow when the Afghanistan team and the Indian team steps on the field, Indian team is definitely at par and this is going to probably be an easy match for India. That, that is what we expect, that is what we wish for. But yes, the Indian cricketers, the professional cricketers know the importance of this game and hence over the past two, two and a half hours, all the players of the Indian cricket team including the captain Rohit Sharma have stepped out. They, ha they were in fact in the nets for at least 40 to 45 minutes post which the fielding drills have started over here. Remember before the World Cup, one of the crucial concerns of the Indian team was that our players were missing a lot of catches and hence the players that you are seeing uh, right here practicing. These players are making sure that whatever complaints, whatever points, whatever loopholes were there before the World Cup, all those doubts are settled and that is the reason why we are seeing heavy work done by all our players making sure that tomorrow when they finally come up against Afghanistan, although that is a slightly lighter team, but yes, Afghanistan definitely has the capacity to spring back any time around and it also has, a, it has the capacity to go, go ahead and give a setback to any of the teams and hence since our, since our team is very very professional and hence we are seeing all our players who are on the ground sweating it out.
Arun Jaitley Stadium in Delhi is going to host five matches of this year's Cricket World Cup. The preparations are on full swing ahead of the World Cup this year. The BCCI had allocated around crores of rupees to all the cricket associations that are going to host World Cup matches. The DDCA is just one of them. The DCA, as you can see, the preparations are on full swing at the stadium right now. Currently, where I am is the Arun Jaitley Stadium. If you can see, the whole stadium has been revamped and renovated right now. Even the seats, the infrastructure, the outfield, the pitch, everything has been changed and revamped and renovated. Around over 30,000 seats from the capacity of 48,000 seats have been changed in the stadium. Oh, as you can, see, as we know that. During the India vs Australia Test Match Series, there were a lot of complaints about the toilets in the stadium. After that, IPL happened, but still the people had complained about it. When I was speaking to Rajan Manchandra, the Joint Secretary of the DDCA, he has said that all the toilets have been remade and everything has been changed ahead of this World Cup. Even if you can see right now, the preparations are going on. One such, the Virat Kohli Pavilion, Bishan Singh Bedi stand, Gautam Gambhi stand, Every stand and every seat has been changed in the stadium. If, I'm, if I talk about the pitch, the pitch has been made again. 